Okay, we're finally to action potentials. So let's start though with a learning check, referring back to graded potentials. Okay, brief reminder, I didn't show this image. I want you to get used to seeing some of these pictures um, which are showing a membrane and then a potentiometer or voltmeter um, that displays volts. Is that how you spell that? Um, so a graded potential is when um, gated ion channels open. So here we're at rest. And when those channels open, it's going to allow sodium to flow in. The ligand binding is the stimulus, causes sodium to flow in. This is depolarization. This is then these ions that have entered the cell are going to spread next door. That's what this is. So this is Na spreading. This is a local current. So this is what's happening in our local potential, our graded potential, is the stimulus being right here causes depolarization. That depolarization decreases in intensity as we get farther away from that stimulus. So here, the membrane's still at rest, right? So that's a local potential. And that is occurring where? At the dendrites or cell body. I don't want to include the axon helix there. So this is where that's happening. So what creates an action potential? An action potential occurs when threshold is reached, threshold potential. It, this is an all or none phenomenon when the membrane depolarizes enough at the axon helix to open voltage gated sodium channels. So that's the big part of action potential is we have to have voltage gated sodium channels open. Whereas these are ligand gated, right? Okay, let's look at this. A whole lot more. Here is the generation of an action potential. So again, we're at the axon helix. We have resting membrane potential to start with, minus 70. And we've got our two special channels, voltage-gated sodium and voltage-gated potassium. These are two channels that are critical for the action potential to occur. So step one of an action potential is depolarization to threshold occurs, right? We have to reach threshold. Not super surprising. Um, yeah, so <laughs> at rest, Channels are closed. Depolarization occurs due to graded potentials that are large enough to reach the axon helix. So we are looking at the axon helix right now. If the graded potential is enough to reach the axon helix and depolarize to threshold, Threshold is typically between minus 50 and minus 60. In this cell, it's minus 60. I know that because it tells me right here. Um, what this depolarization does is opens voltage-gated sodium channels. So threshold means voltage-gated sodium channels open. Had voltage-gated sodium channels opened before, no, ligand-gated sodium channels had opened, causing a graded potential, not voltage-gated. So we've got, so far, depolarization, opening voltage-gated sodium channels, 
what does, when the voltage, voltage gated sodium channel is open, what does that do? Sodium flows in. What does that do? Depolarizes the cell further. Right, that's, we're still at minus 60. That's this. The cell is further depolarizes, depolarized because these voltage gated sodium channels open. That's what's shown right here. Sodium is flowing in down its electrochemical gradient concentration and charge gradient. So this is a positive feedback loop. Can you see how depolarize the initial stimulus of depolarizing causes voltage gated sodium channels, which cause further depolarization. This is a positive feedback loop. Instead of drawing this arrow, we could just do this to have a positive feedback. One of those rare cases of positive feedback. Remember that with positive feedback, you have to have something at the end to turn off the system. What's gonna happen is when we have hope that plus 10, eventually plus 30 is kind of maxing out, we're going to have something else happen. Um, two things happen, so we'll, we'll, we'll get there, but something's going to change. It's gonna be further voltage gated channels opening. It's gonna allow our stimulus to, um, our system to turn off. So all or nothing is a key thing about the action potential. This is going to happen until it once you reach threshold. Once you reach threshold, an action potential will occur. And that is the all or nothing phenomenon. So let's look at the changes in member potential during an action potential. We've done this already um, for graded potentials. We have drawn that depolarization and repolarization, um, hyperpolarizations that can occur. Let's now do this for an action potential. So we are going to be drawing a graph here and we're gonna have, give some reference numbers. So the Y axis is going to be, I think I have this come up, um, VM. So voltage across the membrane in millivolts and across the X axis is going to be time. This is gonna be like milliseconds, this is fast. Some reference numbers are going to be minus 70. That's going to be our resting member potential of a typical neuron. We've got minus 55. That is what we're going to call threshold for the system. Um, threshold potential you'll see anywhere between like minus 40 and minus 60. I will tell you when we've reached threshold, right? Um, so like, I'm not gonna make you guess, like, is this threshold? Um, you'll, you'll be given that number for a certain system. So this is gonna be threshold right here. Zero is zero. So that's when there's no polarity inside and outside the cell. Remember, this is all measuring the membrane potential inside the cell compared to outside the cell. So we're um, recording VM. So if it's the same inside and outside, it's gonna be zero. Plus 30 is kind of, is gonna be the most positive we get um, during the action potential. Okay, so at rest, I'll choose a different color here. We're gonna start at rest at minus 70. And our cell's at rest. And maybe we even have some, some um, Flips that don't reach threshold. Where are we measuring here? Anywhere along the axon, right? That's where we're looking. I would think of it as let's let's just talk about like the axon halo right now, right? This same thing though is going to occur anywhere along the axon where when the action potential is occurring. Um, an important thing to note: what I'm going to draw is not movement down the axon. It's in one little chunk across time. The x-axis is time, not space. So let's say then that we've 
we get a stimulus that's big enough to reach threshold. So that here, stimulus, and I'm gonna draw in threshold. I think I can actually make a line here. So here's my threshold line. Assume we have a stimulus that whoop, and shot up. Let me try to make that the same size as my previous one. Okay. So it's a, it's a stimulus that, whoop, we go up. We cross threshold. Depolarization of the threshold. What happens when we reach threshold? Voltage gated sodium channels open. What does this do? Causes a rapid rise in memory potential, rapid depolarization as sodium flows in. The opening of sodium channels causes more sodium channels to open, more depolarization causes more sodium channels to open, more sodium flows in, causes more, more, more depolarization until we reach maximum. All or nothing phenomenon. At the top, we're going to have repolarization. Let me just actually draw that in. We're gonna go just kind of down like that. That repolarization, so I'm gonna write voltage gated sodium channels open depolarization. Up here, what happens to cause this repolarization, repolarizing the cell? Two things. Voltage gated sodium channels are going to inactivate and voltage gated potassium channels are going to open. Sodium will stop flowing out because of the inactivation. When voltage gated sodium channels open, where, where does sodium, where does potassium go? When voltage gated potassium channels open, where does potassium go? It goes out because of the concentration gradient of potassium. Also we're at plus 30 now, so it wants to go out because it actually has an electrochemical gradient. It also has a, a electrical gradient. So the permeability of the membrane to sodium has decreased. The permeability of the membrane to potassium has increased. So repolarization is due to potassium flowing out and no more sodium flowing out. This is going to result not just in depolarization, repolarization, but hyperpolarization. Hyper, more, more polarized than normal. This is because the sodium, the potassium keeps flowing out, kind of can't stop right, like quick enough. Um, so we basically overshoot our rest. This is important actually, because hyperpolarizing is going to cause the sodium channels are going to reset. They're gonna go from inactive to closed. This allows another action potential to occur. So once we get up, here, oops, that should be up here. We're back at rest. I'm sorry, that's not rest. Rest is right here. I had that right before. Um, this hyperpolarization hyperpolar allows sodium channels to reset. We can have another stimulus. Then we get back to rest. So another stimulus is even more easy to, to generate. I'll go through these two, this, this end here a little bit more in detail because that's gonna result, um, relate to our refractory periods and different types of refractory, meaning when another action potential can't occur or is really hard to occur. So I'll come back to that piece there. So this is a, a, a basics of what's happening at each step. I'm gonna tell you about the voltage gated sodium channel a little bit more, then I'll um, do a separate video to kind of wrap up.
So this channel is a really cool channel, ion channel. Um, so what's gonna happen, it can, it's got three states, closed, open, and activated. At minus 70, what is it? It's closed. Um, so here is at rest, this activation gate, this is its normal gate. So just if you think of a gated ion channel, it's gate. This is going to be its inactivation part. So here it's at rest, it is closed, right? That's all we really we care about because of the voltage it is sensitive to. When we reach threshold, this is rest, what happens to threshold? Well, a depolarizing stimulus has occurred. So the activation gate opens. Our channel is now open, right? Voltage gated channel um, opens in response to a change in, in voltage. In this case, minus 55, which is like, that's that because that's what threshold is, that's what our neurons fire at. That is the threshold. This channel dictates the threshold that is required for our neurons to fire, required them to fire. Okay, next we're going up to plus 30. This is the top of our action potential. What is gonna happen there? Here we have inactivation. So this is not opened or closed. It's inactivated. Technically, it's open but inactivated. When we go back down, so we've got repolarization and then hyperpolarization. So going just below that resting memory potential because of potassium flowing out, what happens then? We have reset. So we've got reset. This means it's closed again. So the state, the simple state is just going back to closed, right? You don't need to know um, what happens to each of these things besides that it can help you know it's closed. The ball has to move so it's not inactivated anymore, but it also is going to close because that's how it is at rest. If it's open, we're gonna have problems. Sodium's gonna flow in and we can't wait to have another action potential. There, when it gets to cardiac tissue, that's different. Okay, so I'm gonna pause there do the repolarization detail related to potassium channels and another overview in the next video.